Jimmy, thank you for joining us. Can we have a roll call, please? Um, Mr. Chu? Here. Mr. Fitzgerald? Here. Mrs. Donato? Here. Mrs. Jenkins? Mr. Augustine? Mr. Coder? Mr. Hack? Here. I need a, uh, an agenda approval. Can I get a motion to approve the agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as submitted. I need a second. I'll second. Approval. Mrs. Donato? Yes. Mrs. Jenkins? Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mr. Hack? Yes. Agenda approved. The will be by Christian Chu. Christian Chu, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Holy One, you have given us the responsibility of leadership in the affairs of our city. May what we say and do here this night be worthy of your sight and for the benefit of those who have trusted up to us this duty. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So our minutes from our regular meeting, can I get a motion to accept those? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of the regular 6-1-2020 meeting as written. Second.
Yes, here. Mr. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mrs. Donato? Yes. Mrs. Jenkins? Yes. Mr. Heck? Yes. Congratulations. Easy A appointment. Legislation, moving into legislation ordinance number one is table. So we have ordinance number two. First reading. An ordinance amending section 167.07 relating to the classification and compensation plan and declaring an emergency. As we discussed at the last meeting, it would be necessary to bring back um, this piece of legislation. The legislation before you tonight would uh, reclass the public works superintendent uh, from a grade 25 to a 23. This uh, proposed reclassification is based upon a compensa compensation study that was done. Uh, then the other reclassification would be for the director of finance, changing it from the director of finance, human resources director, to the um, just the director of finance, as we had discussed in the past. And they and that position is at the proper grade, which is a 26. Um, this legislation can go three readings. Okay, great. We'll leave it on for second reading. Or for the third reading, resolution number three, second reading. A resolution authorizing the city of Painesville, Ohio, to proceed with the demolition of an unsafe structure located at 518 Cedar Brook Drive in the city of Painesville. Lake County, Ohio, and to request the assistance and cooperation of the Lake County Land Reutilization Corporation in effecting the same and declaring an emergency. As we've done in the past, the Lake County Land Reutilization Corporation solicits um, communities to submit properties for demolition. If they have the funding available, they are willing to provide the fundings to demolish those buildings. This year, we initially submitted two properties. Uh, one of them is currently under appeal, but the legislation before you tonight would is a legislation that would move forward the demolition of 518 Cedar Brook Drive. And this legislation can go uh, three readings. So we'll let it say. Resolution number four, first reading. A resolution approving the preliminary plat of Emerald Point subdivision and declaring an emergency. As uh, Ms. White uh, previously uh, mentioned, the Planning Commission recommended approval of the Emerald Point subdivision at the meeting held June 13th, 2019. The subdivision consists of 16 single-family unit lots located on approximately 5.3 acres of land off Richmond Street and Skinner Avenue. Uh, the development um, is consistent with the development agreement that was part of the rezoning of this property approved by the City, of, city Council by Ordinance Number 2-17 on January 7, 2017. Uh, the developer submitted the final plat for Emerald Point subdivision to be approved by the Planning Commission on June 11th. Upon review of the documentation for this development, it was discovered that the preliminary cluster application was not forwarded to the City Council for their acceptance. This is a requirement of the City Code. Um, the developer has proceeded with the installation of the improvements in order to of the improvements in order to proceed with the recording of the plat and the development of this property. And uh, because the developer has met all the requirements, they are requesting that this be approved on first reading. So all the improvements are in, correct? Yes, all the infrastructure, even the final code of the roadway has been put in. So um, this was an oversight. Um, by sure. from last from last year, he did not come before planning commission. So now he submitted his final plan, which planning commission approved last week. 
And in order to sell the lots, he has to get the, the filing of the preliminary plat through council first, and then he takes the final plat to be recorded at the uh, recorder's office, and then those lots can be sold off. So I know there's a lot uh, of people on uh, Windjammer have some concerns over that property, and I know that they had asked to be informed that things were being changed on that. At our at your planning commission meeting, was anyone from Windjammer? Was there any opposition or any readings from Windjammer uh, from the residents that had those oppositions in the past? Any communication? No. Um, both last year and this year, there were. No correspondence or any um, comments made. I, I would like to point out that um, the developer did do extensive improvements for the Windjammer Bankside people that were having the issues while he was over there doing his roadway. So he did do extensive improvements. The city engineer and the uh, uh, soil and water had been out there doing inspections and have spoke to those residents, and they are all very happy with uh, the improvements that have been made. So you are comfortable that this would not need three readings for the public to voice their concerns. You're comfortable that we've met their concerns, we've answered them. So if we move, if we were to suspend this tonight, you don't see any repercussions from residents that had concerns. I do not. And either I did discuss this with our city engineer, she also feels comfortable allowing this to move forward. We, just so you know, we met with them about two weeks ago and actually walked the property, and they seem. Again, very satisfied with the improvements that were made. I, I'd like to see a visual. I haven't seen a visual of this, of how how the layout of this is supposed to look. And I also don't know about um, like retention, water retention basins, or anything like that. So. I just guess I'm curious. I feel like normally we see that. We see. Um, I, can, I can forward it to you if you want. I can find, it, find an email and send it and just send it to Mr. Lewis and you can But that wouldn't help for tonight. Yeah. I mean, you know, so it, it just it's just uncommon, I think, for us not to even have a visual. Did we see it? it is it a plan that we saw back? Yes, it was the development agreement that was shown with the layout of the lots, the, the layout of the cul-de-sac in the 16 lots. It was built exactly to that development agreement that was submitted as part of that rezoning in 2017. So we have to see So they're exactly the same. It's the only difference is the preliminary plat shows all of the, um, the roadway widths, the curbing, the storm sewers, and all that on the actual plat, and then the final plat shows the actual construction of the street, how deep it is, the depth, the storm sewer, uh, drainage rates, and things like that, so. And that's all going into the Skinner Avenue? No, no it's it going down into the It's going into um, a culvert, into a retention basin, down the hill towards the river, which was approved through Lake County Stormwater Management. So really, this is just technicality that we need to fix because of the oversight. Yeah. If, we had been, if, we, if, we, if this had been there last year, we would not be seeing this. Correct. Correct. So, okay. I'm not talking about that. Can I ask one question? Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Um, I had read, I think, in your email to us that there were some um, barriers between like the, the, the planning commission required some additional uh, barriers between his development and the existing houses there? The landscaping? Yeah. He left the existing landscape. He did not remove the trees along that one line where Windjammer and his development are. He left all of the, the trees. The and, and the inspectors had gone out and looked, and those were all still remaining. There will be some landscaping placed at the entrance, okay. and then there is an area as you go up to the cul-de-sac. It's a common area where there will be their cluster mailbox will be located, and it will be a pavilion area for the enjoyment of the residents of that area of the street. 
show the, um, the two residents that are back there. You know my property goes right to it. I have plenty of barrier on my own property. But then there's two residents to the east of me. What's between them and his property? I'm not certain without looking at the actual I think there is, there's a, a good buffer. There was, I think, a uh, 40 or 50 foot buffer along that edge of the property where your adjacent property line and the ones that are next to you as you go up Skinner. So that buffer is still there. So you're satisfied with the buffer that's there? Yes, as as that, as yes. that was what was part of that development plan. So it was built according to the development plan. And, and one of the residents, sure, I surely think. But she put up a fence. Yes. There was also that fence mm -hmm. that, that she had put up as well. It had nothing to do with the development, but that, that's a buffer as well. Right. Because you can't see from skin off, off the drive. Did you uh, make a motion? Move this is uh, Second. Second. Mrs. Shu? Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mrs. Donato? Yes. Mrs. Jenkins? Yes. Mr. Augustine? Yes. Mr. Fodor? Yes. Mr. Hat? Yes. Move to adopt. Second. <coughs> Mrs. Jenkins? Yes. Mr. Augustine? Mr. Fodor? Yes. Mrs. Shoup? Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mrs. Zanato? Yes. Mr. Hack? Yes. Resolution number four pass. Resolution number five, first reading. A resolution authorizing and directing the city manager to advertise for bids and enter into a contract, including any and all ensuing change orders with the lowest and best bidder to replace the mechanical components of the number three primary clarifier at the water pollution control plant and declaring an emergency. The mechanical components uh, for the number three primary clarifier have deteriorated due to age uh, and um, corrosion. Uh, the drive mechanism and the sludge collector are no longer in service and required to be re or, and are required to be replaced. The estimated cost is 225000 It is in the capital budget uh, that was approved by the city council and is located, will strictly come out of the sewer fund. In order to reduce the overall cost, uh, staff will be um, removing the existing mechanical components and then we will hire a contractor to come in and replace them. Uh, because uh, this, we need to bid out this project, we are requesting that we waive second, third reading and it be passed uh, this evening. Any questions? Move to suspend. Second. Second. Mr. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mrs. Donato? Yes. Mrs. Jenkins? Yes. Mr. Augustine? Yes. Mr. Fodor? Yes. Mr. Shoup? Yes. Mr. Hack? Yes. No do the Second. Mrs. Donato? Yes. Mrs. Jenkins? Yes. Mr. Augustine? Yes. Mr. Fodor? Yes. Mrs. Shoup? Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mr. Heck? Yes, resolution number five passed. Unfinished business, racism, and public health crisis. Katie?
comments on it?
So to go to Jim's point, um, the example that you gave, how does that translate back to a health issue? Because we're talking specifically that because there's racism and that inherent bias prevents people or causes people to get less than perfect care, how does what we're talking about here relate just strictly to health? Is that not what this is for? Strictly health or
I'm, what I'm saying is that I'm disagreeing with nothing is being done. And so that's why it's a crisis, a public health crisis. I believe a lot is being done and a lot more could be done. So I don't want it to come off like I'm saying that more can't be done because it certainly is a critical issue.
So yeah, very, you got enough money. So I'm very fortunate for that. And um, at this point, can I get a uh, motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second.